Welcome to Taking Healthy Back with Maria, with your host, Maria Malik, experience coach, conscience educator, and destination retreat host, presents to you countless ways to overcome an overwhelmed, overprocessed, and overmedicated lifestyle. She'll be covering everything wellness, from getting more from life than you put into it, destination retreats to healthy cooking, and conscious education. So please welcome the host of Taking Healthy Back with Maria. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to Taking Healthy Back with Maria. I'm your host, Maria Malik, and you are going to find everything wellness in this place because we need to reclaim our health and wellness. So I'm going to bring to you people who can help you take that health back, overcome your overmedicated, overprocessed, overstressed over everything life. And today I have a great guest. Her name is Laura Oswald. I have known this woman for over 40 years. I was actually went to school with her sister. We were in the same class. And then Laura and I had this amazing connection through health and wellness. She's a somatic therapist, a nutritionist, a massage therapist, so today's show is called Unveiling the Body's Secrets. Are your hidden emotions holding you back? You know, trauma is not what happened to you. It's how the body reacts to and stores what has happened to you. A somatic experience taps into our innate healing capacity by inviting us to listen to the story as our body tells us. Today, we're going to discuss how Laura uses her knowledge and her experience with her clients, with her family, of the essential functions of the nervous system to enhance the therapeutic process. That's a lot of words for how to use your body to help you feel better. Welcome, Laura. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. I am happy to have you here. And... What people don't understand is you may know someone for 40 years, but you may never get to know them. And our, our journey together has been so enriching, so fulfilling, so much laughter, so much beauty, so much wonder. And I am famous for saying that when you turn off the bad emotions, you turn off the good ones. And so today we're going to explore somatic therapy and what what that really means. And I, I've seen a trend of somatic breath work and therapy coming up. So tell us about it and how you got into this method of healing. Thank sure. you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, somatic work is uh, soma, which is of the body. So that's the word soma. Uh, and it it's mainly focusing on what's happening in our bodies. So a lot of therapy models focus mainly on what's going on cognitively in the mind. So this is dropping down into the body and paying more attention to what's happening uh, emotion wise, sensation wise, and seeing what comes up from that. So um, nervous system harmonization is a big piece to somatic healing. So really knowing that the traumas we've experienced, whether they be small or large, are stored in our nervous system. And if we don't do anything with that trauma, if we don't give attention to those sensations and feelings and emotions, uh, that trauma will just remain in the body and remain in our tissues and our system, causing all kinds of issues from gut health problems to mental health issues um, and so on. So really just uh, focusing more on what's happening in the body and spending time there and getting curious and uh, allowing all of what's happening to have a seat at the table. Yeah. I don't like to use the T word, so I'm going to say the T word. I know that there's a lot of people who experience it at li at, in life, mm -hmm. but do we have to have this big, dramatic, uh, T word <laughs> in order for us to store emotion. C 
can, is, is it perceived or is it actual, the T word? Yeah, it's so great question. Um, I am a, m myself with my own history, I always thought I don't have trauma. I don't have, you know, I don't have any of that. I, I, um, you know, I haven't had any major, you know, uh, physical abuse. I haven't had things like that. So I must not be a candidate for this, you know, and realizing that it, it can look so many different ways. Um, being emotionally, you know, in, in a relationship where you're emotionally abused, um, you know, with the way that you're spoken to or manipulated, controlled, mm -hmm. this is all forms of um, trauma. So yes, it can show up in many different ways. In my opinion, every single person has experienced some form of trauma, mm -hmm. uh, whether that be big, small, um, there is no, you know, there's no right or wrong, like, I don't think I have it. It's like, we all have some trauma. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something that we don't want to sweep under the rug, right? We don't want to be like, oh, that's not me. That doesn't apply. I haven't had anything really horrible happen to me. When we really sit back and think about what holds us back in life or the relationships we've had that haven't served us, there's potentially um, underlying um, trauma that needs to be addressed. Well, I'm even thinking about if you meet people and they say something to you that doesn't sit right, or maybe there's a kindergarten teacher who said, oh, you're never going to amount to anything, Jimmy, or whatever. That, that is a form of the T word, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, definitely. Because those early attachments, right, that we have with our caregivers, um, that could be parents, grandparents, siblings, um, you know, if you have an older sibling that helped raise you, um, teachers, coaches, uh, all of these people help to form our attachments to how we feel about ourselves, how we operate in relationships. So if you were made to feel like you weren't good enough as a child or you weren't going to make it or, you know, that sticks with us. And um and it's not something to have shame around. Like we can't control that. We couldn't control who our caregivers were. We couldn't control some of these things mm -hmm. and these people in our lives. So it, we don't want to look um, at these things like I'm so broken and there's no hope. It's like, you know, these were things that were out of our control a lot of the time. So it's sort of having that softness, that curiosity, that self-compassion, like, okay, I want to, I want to kind of explore this because I feel like there's some there's some stuff there that wants to be looked at. And how do I do that with, you know, kindness towards myself and curiosity? So yes, absolutely. Our relationships in our childhood years absolutely form how we behave in our adult relationships. Well, and I'm all, I also understand that as a, let's say, kindergartner, they don't know how to process their emotions yet. And they may not even consider that, you know, since they don't understand, oh, you'll never amount to anything, Jimmy, they may not even understand that, but the body hears it and the mind stores it as well in the subconscious. Can you touch upon that? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, as children, we don't have the tools, right? Like you just said, we don't know what's happening to us, but fascinatingly enough and amazingly enough, we have these ways of coping and ways of surviving these situations. Um, so, you know, for example, if you were trying to get away from a particular person or situation and you really couldn't, um, that, that stays in your body, like that desire, that fear, that angst, those things. So, you know, we, find ways to survive these situations as children um, mm -hmm. and as teens, as young adults. And as we get older and we come into adulthood, we get to take a step back and say, you know, this is how I coped for a long time. This is how I survived that situation, but I'm not in that situation anymore. So we don't have to perceive something that might be similar to that as a threat. We can now mm -hmm you know, realize that we can choose differently. Um, and often that takes spending some time with that past experience or trauma and really giving it some attention and maybe talking about it with a somatic, you know, practitioner or therapist. And then when you can make those connections like, oh, 
that's why I behave this way because X, Y, Z happened. Well, then it empowers you to be able to say, I don't need to hold on to those survival tactics anymore. I don't need to stay closed up and shut off. Now there's a new way. Um, so yeah, it's very fascinating work. It's really effective. Um, you know, again, we really have not been taught to pay attention to what's happening in our bodies. Um, so this yeah. is really, um, you know, pretty groundbreaking and it's been around for a long time, but it's really starting to surface now. Yeah. Right. Right. Can you give us some real life examples of different things that people do to cope, you know, obviously overeating, gambling, you mm -hmm. know, porn, but those are like the biggies that everyone thinks about. What, what are some more subtle things that, that people do? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So, um, I'm happy to share from my own experience too, that, you know, my, my particular childhood trauma was around not feeling, uh, seen, heard, listened to, um, and this manifested in sort of, and, and I also had, um, some caregivers that were pretty volatile emotionally. So mm -hmm. I really found myself having to um, be very hypervigilant from a very young age and kind of tiptoeing, walking on eggshells sort of a thing. And mm -hmm. that kind of produced this sort of anxious attachment style um, where I, I felt sort of secure, but not really. And it was inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So I found myself then not knowing this right at the time I'm a kid and I'm, I mean, you know, getting a little older and then moving into relationships where I, I went for that same exact, you know, type of person that I had grown up around mm -hmm. because it was familiar. It was familiar to my nervous system. Um, so really paying attention to mm -hmm. like how we behave with people. And again, the, the curiosity and the self-compassion because we don't want to judge ourselves or be unkind. It's like, these are things that were out of our control. Um, and, but for me, it manifested as being a fixer, a people mm. pleaser, being okay. controlling, being controlling. Cause it's like, well, what can I control? Cause so many things feel out of control. Right. Um, and so it manifested for me in, in those ways and many others. Um, and it might seem sort of subtle and, and the ways that I have coped with those things is, not very well historically until more recently, um, but definitely being, you know, avoidant sometimes, avoidant of hard conversations, shutting down, wanting to run away um, because it felt too overwhelming, too consuming. I don't know how to do this. Uh, so really um, getting curious about the way that we are in relationships and, you know, we're in relationships mm -hmm. all day, every day. Right. Like, not stuff we're learning when we're younger. So, you know, but it is stuff we can learn now. And um, there's a lot of hope in that. But yes, it can manifest in so many different ways. Um, you know, some people escape, they want to just be outdoors all the time, they just want to disappear into the mountains. Some people want to drink all, you know, all the things, but mm -hmm. when we avoid when we find ways to cope. Often we are avoiding what feels difficult and hard, and that stuff is just not going to go away. It's still going to hang out there until you give it some attention. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. All, all those little subtle ways I can hear people saying, well, that's just me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not exploring it and not thinking that they they have to dive into it and, and look at themselves. I know mm -hmm. it really is hard to look at yourself but i can tell you for my own self once i went down the rabbit hole i'm i'm not out of the rabbit hole yet and and it's not just going down the rabbit hole to self discovery and healing but it's setting up new habits and boundaries and recognizing these things in the moment mm -hmm. yes. for instance if i say something while i'm trying or, um, gosh, I can't think of anything right now, or, I, you know, basic, I'm not good enough. I will hear it now. In the past, I wouldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. So what I do in the moment is I reframe it. So I kind of erase it in the air, mm -hmm. and then I reframe it. And um, can, can you touch upon that? that I mean, that's I what, I, what I learned kind of intuitively 
Um, what are some of the things that you uh, talk to your clients to help them self-regulate? Yeah, great, great. Um, I love the erasing that in the air, like just that physical, like that movement. It's it's mm -hmm. really, that's really effective. I'm going to start doing that. Um, yes. Yeah, so what I work with um, with clients is for one, I really, um, we always start off our sessions and I encourage, and I do this myself at home and I do this with my children now. What's going well? Like what is going well? What mm. feels resourceful? Because, you know, when we're tapping into what's challenging, it's really good to have some resources to, you know, go back to like, oh, my dog, my cat, my husband, my friend, um, my mother, whatever it might be, my kids, so that we can, my job, like there's so many things, right? So really getting clear on like what's going well and celebrating that, like really mm. taking the time. We, we often gloss over what's going well or what, you know, what's feeling good in our lives because it's the human nature to kind of be like, but all of these things are not going well. Um, but what we're trying to do is kind of teach the nervous system how to hold both. Okay. So, you know, you know, um, the ups and downs of life are never going to go away. It's never going to just be easier. I have people, when is it going to be easier? I used to say that, when is it going to be easier? It's like, it's not mm -hmm. about being, it's not about making conflict disappear or making hard things not happen. It's learning how to be with both. How do we teach the nervous system mm -hmm. that we can hold both what's difficult and you know what is going well. Um, and so the practice is that the more we can give attention to what's inside of us that's not feeling well, well, then it kind of like opens us up. It frees up some space for us to have more joy, to have more of what we want. So I really um, like to make sure clients understand that this is a process and to not be, you know, there really needs to be a level of sort of slowing down and pausing and taking our time with mm -hmm. this because some of these traumas for people can be really deep and they right. can be 40 50 60 70 right. years old so i know, love just i love what you're saying and i love you so much anyway that everything that you're saying just makes me feel good and calm we have a commercial break you guys we'll be back in a couple of minutes what if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back. We're talking today with Laura Oswald, somatic therapist, but she's way more than that. And she makes it look and sound so easy. And I know the road getting here was not so. 
So tell us briefly how you went from nutrition, massage therapy, and now this. What brought you here? Thank you. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to share. And um, I moved to Colorado in 2001 from New Jersey, where I grew up. And uh, I've always kind of been very, even from a young age, kind of called to healthy eating. Um, You know, I was definitely raised in an environment where that was prioritized and, you know, um, essential oils and things like this and, you know, healing with nature. And I spent a lot of time outdoors as a kid. Um, So I think that fostering that relationship with the trees and the water Mm -hmm. and my surroundings really sort of instilled that connection to nature and how healing it can be. Uh, So when I moved to Colorado, um, I was 21 years old and just kind of like, what am I going to do? And uh, I found my way into a um, horticulture program and studied uh, on a deeper level kind of plants and um, learning a lot about how to use them in all different ways. And then uh, after that program, um, a couple years later, I did end up going to massage school. And so I've been a massage therapist for about 15 years. And Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so after that, I had my children. Um, I moved into being a doula for a little while, was very called to kind of share my experience um, around that and and to help other women. Uh, And then my son was born with um, a lot of eczema, a lot of skin issues, um, a lot of um, liver problems and uh, all kinds of stuff going on in his body. And I got thrust into nutrition and just like even, you know, clearing out my pantry, getting really clean with what we were eating, um, supplementation to help rebuild his gut health. And so gut health was huge and it became a big focus for me. And again, just feeling called always to kind of share what I was learning with other moms, you know, specifically at the time, because, you know, if I could help them in any way to not go through sort of the struggle and the, and the hardships that I had gone through um, with his sort of diagnosis, um, was where mm-hmm. I wanted to be. And so I um, went to school for nutrition and got a holistic uh, nutrition certificate about six years ago. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then came up against my own health issues. I was in an um, unhealthy marriage and uh, that was heading towards divorce. And during that time between my son struggling and then now my body um, really struggling. And to be honest with you, Maria, when I look back, I see it so clearly now. There was so much self-abandonment happening. I was prioritizing everyone else. And of course, I was going to prioritize my son wholeheartedly. Um, and outside of that relationship, I was prioritizing um, a lot of other people's needs, including um, the person I was married to and really abandoning myself. And I got sick. I got sick because that's what happens if we ignore what's happening within us. Um, it manifests as you know, in many different ways. And typically it can cause a lot of health issues. So found somatic experiencing. I started seeing um, a woman for uh, some, what was called shadow work at the time, which is really looking at our shadows, looking at those like darker parts, those trauma pieces, um, and that Mm -hmm. kind of more somatic experiencing. And I was on the receiving end of that for about three years, pretty consistently through my divorce, through the pandemic. Um, And really just fell in love with it because it helped me so much. I mean, I was blown away every session. I was just like, oh my gosh, like another little golden nugget where I felt like I am really like unearthing some stuff here. And it felt exciting to me. It felt, um, you know, I looked forward to it. And, uh, and so then I decided I want to share this too, like kind of on the same path as like, I want to share the nutrition things I've learned. I want to share the gift of, you know, touch like through the massage therapy and so decided to go through a program. Um, it's called Somatic Experiencing International is the program. Mm-hmm. It's a worldwide uh, program, uh, three-year program. And uh, through that, I've learned just so much more about the body and um, many other uh, amazing things, of course, included in the program too. But I have found my way there and feel like everyone should know about this kind of work because I use it every day. I use it in my parenting. Mm-hmm it with myself. I use it with my friends and family. Um, And so 
that's kind of the the quick overview of what led me to this point. But really, it was going through my own really difficult uh, traumas from childhood up until you know really recently, and and realizing like I need to do something about this. Like this is affecting my relationships and my health deeply. Mm-hmm need to do something different. And this is what really worked and helped me. So, well, we heal at the speed of pain. So depending on how much a person can take, will basically determine when they're going to find the help that they need. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I am not a fan of talk therapy. Mm-hmm. I think what we focus on expands. So if we're constantly talking about all the troubles and the troubles and the troubles and you know perhaps our our therapist gives us a prescription or doesn't really give us practical tools and techniques what i love about somatic therapy is that there's so many different so even if you're in public there are things that you can do to self-regulate and make yourself feel better so can you share some of these methods that we do. Definitely. And, and just to touch on what you said about, um, traditional talk therapy, so many of my clients that come to me have hit a wall with that. And that's exactly what they're looking for. They're realizing something is just, there's got to be more and they're not healing at the rate that they want to. They're like ready to dive and it's not happening. And, they end up not moving forward anymore because they don't know what to do. So when people discover this work, that's what we focus on is, you know, of course, there's going to be some things that are happening in the mind, but we really need to drop down into the body. So in your daily life, when you're going through your life, these are things that I do every day um, when I notice, and this takes practice and, you know, and intention and uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I do, for example, would be, um, you know, if I've had a hard conversation with someone or an uncomfortable conversation, or if I'm feeling anxiety about the busyness of the day, um, really, you know, simple things like tapping. Tapping is one that I use a lot. So when we start to feel anxiety or we start to kind of get nervous and we fall into that place of fear, which a lot of anxiety is just fear, um, it's start to kind of get out of our bodies right now we're like in our heads and we're swirling and we're swirling and we're sort of like out here we're not really in our bodies anymore so Mm -hmm. when i notice that that's happening to me or i'm starting to spiral down like a negative thought pattern or thought loop i bring Mm -hmm. myself back to my body so that can look like tapping taking a Mm -hmm. deep breath like i just got just doing that this is a great technique for bringing us back into the sensations and the feelings, mm-hmm. what's happening in our bodies. It can also, it can, you know, something I tell clients is it's really what feels good for you. There is no right or wrong way here. If you want to pound, uh, if you want to make some noise, if you want to, you know, mm-hmm. tap on your arms, tap on your legs, but just doing those things alone, you'll notice like, ah, oh, I'm like back in my body, tapping on our heads. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And so it really like gets us out of that like swirling, you know, headspace that's really n- not where we want to be because we're not going to make progress in that space on what we want. So we want to bring it back into the body. Um, going outside and putting your bare feet on the ground, just laying on the ground, soaking up some sun. The idea is that we're sort of interrupting. It's also kind of called interruption therapy. We're interrupting those thought mm. patterns. So when we start, we and we want to notice it, like, oh, I'm feeling anxiety. Well, Hi, anxiety. I feel you. I see you. I know you're there. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt this now and I'm going to do something different so that I don't spiral into it and spend the whole day or days, um, you know, in this sort of negative space. So, um, another great thing, and, and this is actually, um, Dr. Peter Levine, who came up with somatic experiencing a long time ago, he, studied animals in the wild. And what he found was that, you know, when let's say an animal is being chased by a predator and they don't get eaten, and now they're just standing there in the aftermath of what they just experienced, they shake, they physically shake their entire body and they shake it off. Um, They shake off that activated Mm -hmm. energy. 
So that's something that we can do. And this can feel really foreign, different, almost wrong. Some people have been told from a young age, like, we don't have anger, don't cry, you know, basically don't feel what's happening in your body. So really, it can be an unlearning process. You know, this doesn't happen immediately. The first time my somatic therapist said to, you know, find healthy ways to deal with my anger. And she gave me examples. I was like, oh, that feels weird. Like, I can't do that. Like that, you know, but then realizing like, yes, I can. Like it's, these are all normal um, and healthy emotions to have. So really um, uh, shaking is another one that I love to use. Like I'll just, if I'm feeling a lot of activation or like, oh my gosh, there's so much on my plate today. Just like, bleh, you know, just like shake it off mm-hmm. and helps me to just feel a little lighter and looser and bring me back into my body and out of this sort of floating headspace. Um, so yeah, those are some really great techniques that can help us to kind of come mm-hmm. back to our attune to ourselves and really hear, you know, what, what the body's trying to say to us. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're speaking a lot to my own motherhood and things that I said and did as my kids were growing up that I'm now seeing the impact and it's not always pretty, but we will touch upon that when we get back from our next break. Stay tuned with us, you guys. This is great. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like, I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Well, I hope everybody is enjoying what we're talking about because I know that everybody goes through something and everybody feels something. I mean, otherwise you'd be dead, honestly. And a lot of what you're, you've been talking about is reminded me of my motherhood and the things that I said to my kids. I remember saying, you know, they're, they're expressing how they feel. And I'm like, oh, that's ridiculous. Why would you feel that way? And now my adult children, as they're learning to cope as adults, have actually come back to and tell me that some of the way that they were brought up is really a problem for them now and a problem for them in relationships. And I mean, no mother wants to hear that. You know, it's actually been quite devastating for me Here's the thing though, it's never too late, never too late. And I think we really need to address our language and our words 
and how they affect us, whether we know it or not, because I know our brain doesn't know the difference between fact or fiction. So enlighten us, Laura. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes, just the, to speak to that, it's never too late, you know, and, and that's, I think, where a lot of us end up living in that space of like, well, damage is done, I can't do anything now. And, and then we sink into that space of just feeling sad, depressed, you know, detached, um, and so many other things. So yes, the power of our words and also the power of allowing our children to have their experience, their full experience. Mm -hmm. um, I have an example the other day, um, my daughter came back, she was with her dad for the weekend. Um, and she had had a busy weekend. She went from, we had come back from a little spring break trip. It was like right to his house. Grandparents were in town. Um, she had a play date with a friend, like a lot going on. And mm -hmm. she came home and she just, she fell on the floor basically after her dad left and she cried and she cried for a while. And the the wow. fixer, me, my Trump, my, my like, my past trauma to fix, to control, to get to the bottom of it. I just felt all of that surge inside me. Like, okay, I started asking her a couple questions. And then I was like, Laura, pause. Like, we don't need to fix this right now. It's okay that she's crying. She's going through something. I'm going to let her have this experience because if I try mm -hmm. to pull her out of it, I'm not meeting mm -hmm. her where she is. I'm not honoring her for where she's at. I'm making her come out of that, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. And I don't really need to know what it is right now. I just need right. to be present and calm and let her know that she's safe and I'm here when she's ready. And she cried on and off and kind of laid around for about 45 minutes, almost an hour. And I just gently started asking a couple of questions when I watched her body language that she was kind of coming out of it a little. And we never ended up really getting to the bottom of what it might have been, mm -hmm. but I just rubbed her back. I told her I loved her. I asked her if she wanted some water. So that's just an example of like, I think in the past, if I didn't have these resources now and this knowledge that I would have been like, come on, like, why are you crying still? Like, get up. We have stuff to, you know, just that, mm -hmm. that sort of like aggressive, like, like what is going on? And and realizing that, you know, as an adult, I would want to be met with that same compassion and love from a parent or a friend. If I was having just overwhelm and I needed to cry, having someone tell me to get over it or to move on or it's not a deal is like the last thing that our children, you know, or as an adult need to hear. So really being very present for every emotion if it's anger if it every emotion that any of us have at any age is valid and there's something underneath it and it matters um so you know that that's just one example but yes um now i just tell my kids all the time all of your feelings matter everything is valid um because you know, it's a noisy world out there and it's confusing and people are lost and we need to have um, a safe place for our kids to come home to and feel yes. all what they're feeling, you know, and, and feel safe to do that. Yeah. I have a funny story. I don't even know if it fits in here, but it actually has to do with your sister. And um, I had had, I think, my second baby and I had really emotional aftermath. I know there's a word for it, but I don't like labels. And mm -hmm. at the christening reception, I think there wasn't enough food. The soup was cold. People were all coming to me for the answers. And mm -hmm. I went into the bathroom for most of the party. And I was hysterically crying in the bathroom couldn't mm -hmm. stop crying. I like, I just couldn't. And I remember she came in and she was like, snap out of it. And <laughs> I mean, in that moment, yeah, I had a, a room full of guests. No one was going to understand it was a beautiful, uh, event. Mm -hmm. And I was in the bathroom, literally sitting on the toilet crying. And in that moment, I think it was warranted, but it was really funny. And when you were saying all that, I'm like, it just reminded me of that story. 
Yeah, and I mean, Maria, it's like she said that and, she, you know, that's so her. And, you know, it's it's like you just are like, OK, that's definitely like her personality. Right. And but mm -hmm. even if I had had a different friend that came in and said, like, hey, you know, like you're doing so great. Like, I know this is overwhelming. I know this is hard right now, but you're incredible. And we're going to get through this together. How can I support you right now? Like, do you want a hug? Can I, you know, go grab mm -hmm. you? a glass of water, like there, there's different ways that that could be handled. And you would have still felt like supported for where you were at, which mm. was like not in a good place. Right. Um, but I think so she started that way, but I, I was so inconsolable. You were inconsolable. <laughs> so yeah. At that point, it's like, let's deal with this later. Chip chop. We got to get back out there, you know, and I'm sure. Exactly. She exactly. And like, that's yeah. fine too. So like, just knowing that you know, we really want to be sensitive to where people are at. And, and, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and this takes, this can take allowing more time and space. And in this culture of like, go, 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 we're moving. We got right. stuff to do. It's fast, like fast, it's fast. Yeah. unlearning of that and like a slowing down. And you'd be amazed when you slow down and you create more space, how like much more time you end up having. Right. I love mm -hmm. your conscious parenting and, I, I'm really hoping that it's going to get more people to call you because you're such a gentle person and uh, you've helped me so much in so many ways. Let's talk about the words, though. How, how do words affect us and how important they are that we choose them properly? Yeah. And I mean, I just want to turn the tables back to you right away because you are one of the people that has taught me how to reframe um, the things that I say and to really be careful of how I use my words. Um, you know, Thanks. we are always in relationship with ourselves too, not just everyone yeah. else. When we speak unkindly to ourselves like that's what the nervous system believes to be true mm -hmm. so something that i've been doing more recently i had um something big that came up in my life just about a week mm -hmm. ago and um it was time for a big shift and i for a long time because of my own attachment wounding from my childhood the way that i learned how to be in relationships um was holding on to this particular relationship for a really long time and I noticed that every time I would think about maybe ending it, there was just just rushing in of I can't I can't do it. There's no way I can do this. It's not going to happen. I can't. I just can't. And about two weeks ago, when I decided that it was time and I really wanted to do this differently, I, I literally just spoke out loud and I don't usually do that, but I spoke out loud and I started saying, I can do this. Now, in my heart and in my body, I didn't really feel that that was true, mm -hmm. but even just saying it helps us to hear it. It helps the nervous system to believe the possibility of it. Mm -hmm. And incredibly, like I could go into the whole story, but I won't, but it's like a big, huge deal for me to have moved past mm -hmm. this. And I truly see now that it was me just out loud speaking I can do this. I am strong enough. I am worthy. I am powerful. I am capable. And I, I, I trust myself. I believe in myself. Some of those at moments, I was like, ah, like a little cringe, like a little, oh, I don't right. know if I really feel that in my body, but still knowing that it's true. Even if I can't fully feel it, yes. I'm going to, I'm going to speak it. And the, and that became like my mantra for days and days. And I'm still saying it now after in like after this has now been an ended relationship. It's just like the power of those words. And um, that's something I work with a lot with clients, too, is mm -hmm. is even if we just imagine, um, let's say let's say it's a piece of um, something we went through as a child, like we were in an abusive situation and we couldn't get away, whether that was physical, emotional, mental, even just imagining now as an adult, what we would have done, what we wish we could have done, if that's getting away, punching someone, whatever it might be, even just imagining it lets the nervous system tap into mm -hmm. and, and sort of complete 
a cycle that's been living inside of us for so long. So the, the words are just so incredibly powerful, the way we speak to ourselves. Um, and it's just like, it's, it's a game changer. It is an absolute game changer. So every day throughout our days, we find ourselves wanting to say something unkind or, you know, being critical to just flip that and no, you're not Laura. No, you're not weak. No, you're not, you know, um, you know, bad at this thing. Like you're doing the best you can. I love you. You're strong. You're capable. Mm -hmm. Just speaking those words into, into existence. It, it can really change how the nervous system responds because it's listening, always listening. All the time, all the time. And I will say though, I'm, I'm glad you said you've been saying it for two weeks and you're still saying it. The words don't mean anything to the nervous system without discipline. If yeah. you start, it's, it's like an exercise program. You yeah. start the program, you go on Monday, but you don't go the rest of the week. So the body doesn't start to change because it's like, oh, well, they're, right. they're not disciplined enough. Right. Um, I like giving the body and the nervous system a personality because then it, it has um, more relation, you know, you can relate to it better. And I'm, we have another commercial coming up and I, we could talk all day, but <laughs> I think at the end of the day, words are so important and i love what you said and just keep saying the positive stuff about yourself and we'll be back thank you what if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair what if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against parkinson's disease Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back. I can't believe we only have eight minutes to go, Laura. Please just give us some parting words. Let people know where they can reach you and then they can always contact me and I'll connect you. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. I love these conversations. And yes, so um, my website is lauraoswald.com. Uh, you can find more information there. I offer uh, Zoom uh, sessions as well, in person and Zoom. I have a place locally that I see clients uh, in my town in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I also see um, clients out of my home and then over Zoom. So um, lots of options to connect. Uh, always offer at least a 15 to 30 minute um, consultation for anyone that just wants to learn more and have some more one-on-one -on -one time with me. Um, 
And yes, so again, this work is just so transformative. Uh, I like to tell people that it is something to not fear, something to, you know, get curious about and be courageous enough to set time aside for yourself, um, really attuning to ourselves on a more regular basis, all of our relationships really shift and change and morph when we are coming from a place of being more whole with ourselves. So um, we want to look at these past um, traumas, experiences, things that have happened to us and really give them some attention because it's kind of, um, you know, what I find with everyone I see is that these parts of us are holding us back because we're not mm. giving the life and the attention that they're asking for. Uh, so really just being able to learn how to drop into the body. And that's something I love helping people learn how to do. And, um, you know, taking time to just slow down and pay attention to our heart space, breathing, um, you know, again, the cognitive therapy model kind of is like a you come in and you unload everything and it's intense and it's almost like re-traumatizing. Okay. So this is a much lower method. We're trying to, we're interrupting at points where we think that maybe there's something there that wants to be explored and looked at. It's very calm. Um, and it's very therapeutic and I've never had anyone leave not feeling like they have learned something new about themselves. Uh, so, and then practice your tapping, practice your shaking, practice ways to get you back into your body and um, centered with yourself and just know that I'm here for you. Anyone out there that wants to just learn more or is curious, you can go to my website, which has a lot of information and then feel free to email me, contact me. All of that is on my website and it's just been such an honor to be here. Uh, thank you, Maria. I love you so much and so grateful to have you in my life. Um, Maria, you Likewise. are an incredible woman and um, anyone that gets to cross your path is just beyond blessed. And thank you so much for having me today. Well, I want to let people know that um, in the couple of retreats that I'm hosting, uh, we're still working at the details, but I'm hoping Laura is going to join us on a retreat to Italy at the end of July and Sedona at the end of September. So if that intrigues anyone, please let us know. Laura, I, I'm also honored to have you on. Thank you so much for being here. You contribute so much to my life and to the people you touch. You guys, this is a wonderful conversation. The more you listen and the more you look forward to who we're going to be talking to is going to help you, whether you put the effort in or not. But when you put the effort in, your life is going to change exponentially. If you're looking for me, I, you can find me taking healthy back on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I like to keep it simple. Heal.me is an app that you could go on and you can look at all the services that I offer. And also, you guys, I want to give another plug to my book. Dare to Declare, Greeting the Day with Intention. We talked about words today and how important they are. And I would love for you to get this book because it'll get you on the right path. And it might just be the first step you need. You know, we can only do one thing at a time. So taking time with your life, you didn't get to where you are overnight. So don't expect results overnight. And with that, my friends, I will see you next Friday. Taking Healthy Back with Maria. I'm your host, Maria Malik. See you next time. This has been Taking Healthy Back with your host, Maria. Tune in each week as Maria will empower you to put your wellness in your control. Right here, Fridays, noon Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.